Hello, we are back to our lecture series on overview and integration of cellular metabolism and we will start with a new metabolism that is nucleotide metabolism, alright. So, we will be covering what do we mean by nucleotide. So, we will be briefly covering a nucleotide chemistry, we will be discussing in this class about de novo synthesis of purine, we will be discussing how the step is regulated, we will be discussing purine salvage pathway as well as about purine analogs, alright. So, this uh, purines and pyrimidines actually when we refer to nucleotide the constituent uh, molecules are purines and pyrimidines, right. So, what are they? They are actually nitrogen containing heterocyclic compound, very important, right. So, nitrogen containing heterocyclic compound whose rings contain carbon and nitrogen, right. Generally, when we are discussing aromatic ring, we generally think of carbon, right. So, carbon, nitrogen both are present, right. The planar structure of purine and pyrimidine facilitates their close association of stacking which standardizes or stabilizes double stranded DNA. Means what? These purines and pyrimidines are actually leading to formation of compounds, nucleotides which are polymerizing to form the unit of life that is DNA, right. They are also referred to as nitrogenous bases, okay. So, these things whenever you are asking uh, I mean discussing about DNA, purine, pyrimidine, nitrogenous bases, only one thing should come to your mind that is the question is being asked about nucleotide metabolism, okay. So, uh, looking at the structure, this is how they look like, right. In this class, we will be focusing on purines, right. Upcoming classes, we will be discussing purine, pyrimidine, I mean disorders of purines and then we will be moving on to pyrimidine. So, pyrimidines actually, the structure wise, they are simpler they have got one ring, okay. Whereas, the purines, they have actually two ring. There is one hexagonal ring and there is one pentagonal ring. It can be represented, the this pentagon may be present in this side, okay. It may be represent on this side as well, right. But the numbering, you should be careful, all right. The hexagonal nitrogen, the ring in the six sided ring, the nitrogen starts as the first one and ultimately it ends with the nitrogen in the pentagon, Take fine. So, what are the types of purines that are that you should be knowing adenine guanine xanthine and hypoxanthine all right these are metabolically important purines of course there are multiple other purine as well for example theobromine theophylline and many other naturally occurring proteins that are present in uh, coffee coffee cocoa right we are not discussing entire uh, nucleotide chemistry to start with, but the very basics which will help you to understand the metabolism of nucleotides, right. So, what are the function of nucleotide? Till now, you already have come across nucleotides even if you are not knowing it, right. Number one DNA RNA, we all know, right. So, provision of energy, right, in the form of ATP, GTP, what I mean, what does energy help? These energy help in muscle contraction, active transport, ion ingredients, multiple things. So, wherever there is an active energy transport, we talk about ATP and GTP and this A and G are adenine and guanine, those are nothing but nucleotides, right. Again, we have come across these names NAD, NADH, FAD, FMN, right. So, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, adenine, right, flavine adenine dinucleotide, flavine mononucleotide and even coenzyme A also contains adenosine, right. So, very important you have come across these names multiple times and all of these are having nucleotide as the main players, right. Activated intermediates, you have read about UDP glucose, UDP galactose, UDP glucuronic acid, S adenosyl methionine, wherever these names are coming, again nucleotides are playing an important role. Apart from that, they are active uh, phosphate donors in signal transduction, secondary, second messengers, right, very important role and also by adenylation, uridyl, uridylation, multiple enzymes are activated. So, you have read even if you are not told about uh, biological function, just simply by recalling many functions, you can already give specific examples, right, I am sure about it, right. So, you should be able to recall where, uh, what are the areas where a nucleotide is involved in a metabolism, right. Now, looking at the um, specific unit of a DNA and RNA, D unit of DNA is actually a nucleotide. 
so what is a nucleotide a nucleotide is a purine or pyrimidine base okay those are nucleo bases adenine guanine those are nitrogenous bases or nucleo bases when they combine with a pentose sugar okay the sugar may be ribose or deoxyribose right so a ribose is how you know glucose looks like in hexagon ribose is a uh, pentose sugar it has got five carbons right and what is deoxyribose in case of deoxyribose in the two prime position there is a h now what is two prime one prime you can see there is a prime symbol this is to avoid a confusion where the purine base the ring of the purine base is named as 1 2 3 4 5 to 9 and the carbon on of the pentose sugar are named as 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash right so a nucleo base along with the pentose sugar forms nucleoside right and when a phosphate group is attached to it it becomes a nucleo Tide. So, nitrogenous base, nitrogenous base plus phosphate, uh, in pentose sugar it becomes nucleoside and a nucleoside plus a phosphate becomes a nucleotide. All right. So, this fundamental concept should be very clear and here you can see some example of bases, their corresponding nucleosides and their corresponding nucleotide. All right. So, these are the bases of DNA and RNA. You can choose to memorize this chart because something I mean anything from here may be combined as an MCQ question when it comes to all except type or even choosing the best answer type of MCQs. For example, in case of DNA the base is guanine, the nucleoside is deoxyguanosine and the nucleotide is deoxyguanylate and then ultimately it can be monophosphate, diphosphate or triphosphate depending on the number of phosphate bonds. So, what is ATP? ATP is definitely a nucleotide all right. So, once AMP is formed one phosphate group it can be act, I mean phosphorylated to form ADP and then ATP all right. So, now that we know what does purine and pyrimidine look like we have a basic idea about the nucleotide chemistry we shall now discuss how this nucleo bases are actually synthesized ok. So, our topic of discussion today is regarding purine synthesis. So, purine can be synthesized in two ways. I mean this whole double ring structure can be synthesized in two ways. Number one is known as de novo synthesis. De novo synthesis means you have heard the term de novo synthesis where one example is during de novo synthesis of fatty acid all right. There have there are multiple example of de novo synthesis. So, de novo synthesis of purine like all other de novo synthesis it happens in our body in C2 from very basic metabolites all primary components are uh, assembled to form a new molecule just like this new car is being assembled from multiple new components. What is this purines have been seen to be formed from other pathway also that is known as salvage pathway which is nothing but recycle of existing nucleotides. So, pre-existing nucleotides if are present they may be recircled circulated in such a way under action of several enzymes so that purine same purine is formed. It can be compared to a, a situation where multiple uh, parts from a junkyard is assembled to form a functional car right both will help you to drive. So, two major routes number one de novo synthesis main component is activated ribose in the form of PRPP phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate we will be discussing right after the amino acid ATP CO2 all of them and there are many more multiple intermediates are there which forms this I mean core purine molecule right whereas in case of salvage pathway we need the base and then we need the PRPP and that can actually lead to directly formation of the nucleotide nucleotide meaning the nitrogenous base the phosphate group as well as the pentose sugar all right 
So, when we are considered with de novo synthesis, de novo synthesis we should always know what are the sources and this is a very common MCQ or an image based questions, right. So, you can see this is the number, you can take a snapshot of this and you can actually number the carbon of your own, right, on your own. So, this is the first nitrogen, alright, this is the second carbon and it goes on and on where this is the ninth, right, and this is the eighth. So, you can do it, right you can actually easily do it. I told you the hexagon and pentagon can be represented on either sides. Needless to say, what are the sources? The sources are aspartate, carbon dioxide in form of bicarbonate, right, from the body, glycine, formyl tetrahydrofolate, that is formate and glutamine, right. We already discussed the intermolecule of glycine is actually incorporated in uh, this. Uh, molecule, right. So, over here we can see the components that are donating, the first nitrogen is from the amine of aspartate, the second and eighth carbon are from formate in the form of formyl tetrahydrofolic acid, formyl THF I told you during one carbon metabolism, the folate uh, components are getting interconverted into each other and the N3 and N9 nitrogen are coming from glutamine. C4, C5 and C N7, the seventh nitrogen is coming from glycine and the sixth carbon is also coming from bicarbonate ion, okay. I am sorry, this would be 2, this is 6, okay. So, we are now discussing how this uh, steps are happening, all right. You might find it a bit difficult to remember because there are multiple big names that you need to remember in sequence, okay. The first step or the preparatory step, it is also called step 0, why we will discuss, is formation of PRPP, right. I told you PRPP is nothing but activated ribose 5-phosphate, because ultimately it is ribose 5, if we already have got ribose 5-phosphate, the entire purine moly nucleus can be loaded on ribose 5-phosphate and then we can get a nucleotide, all right, it is that easy to remember. So, ribose 5-phosphate plus ATP, the enzyme is PRPP synthase or ribose phosphate pyrophosphokinase, same thing, it forms phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate and a molecule of AMP. So, this is the step 0. Remembering structure not important. I am just showing you the structure so that you can conceptually understand the proceedings. So, why we call it a step 0? We call it a step 0 because formation of PRPP is not exclusive in de novo synthesis of purine. What I mean is PRPP is also needed in the pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis, it is also needed in salvage pathway. So, PRPP is not considered a step in the de novo synthesis. Therefore, it is actually the starting molecule, right? just like CPS of urea, right. You have, you can correlate the analogy where it was the starting molecule, but it was not directly participate, the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 was not directly a part of the urea cycle. Similarly, here PRPP synthesis is not the, not included in the purine synthesis pathway, however, it is a preparatory step or step 0. So, what is the first step? The first step is actually combination of glutamine with PRPP to form glutamic acid or glutamate and 5-phosphoribosyl 1-amine or PRA, alright, phosphoribosyl amine, specifically 5-phosphoribosyl 1-amine. So, this is the structure over here, you see the phosphate group was already present, right, it has already gone out in the form of PPI, this 2-phosphate goes out in form of PPI and the nitrogen of glutamine gets attached, all right. Here, this the entire ribose 5-phosphate has been shown, right, and this is the NH2 group that is attached to the ribose 5-phosphate, all right. You know, in any amino acid, the amine group can be represented as NH3 plus and CO minus or NH2 and COH, so it is one and the same. So, this is the first step by formation of PRA, right. 
and ribose 5 phosphate is first loaded with the amine group and ultimately the purine ring will be assembled on ribose 5 phosphate which we already discussed. So, if you just visualize this step, the further steps will be much easier for you to understand. Next, we move to the second step. So, now you can see basically the two rings will be formed one after another, right. So, what happens? The next step is actually glycine incorporation, right. So, what happens over here? The product that is formed is glycinamide ribonucleotide abbreviated as GAR. The enzyme glycinamide ribonucleotide synthetase because ATP is involved and one glycine molecule is incorporated. So, what is happening? This NH2 was already start uh, present to start with. This is the entire glycine molecule that has been incorporated. So, 2 carbon and 1 nitrogen from glycine is already in, right. This is step 2. In the next step, what happens? If you if you remember what were the donors, then you can easily remember these steps also, right? So next, what is happening? A formyl group is being introduced. Formyl group means an aldehyde group or CHO. So formyl transferase or transformylase, glycinamide nu ribonucleotide transformylase. It forms formyl glycinamide ribonucleotide. Who is the formyl donor? Of course, N5N10 methylene tetrahydro. One carbon donor. This is a one molecule from one carbon pool. It is donating one carbon leading to the formation of FGAR or formyl glycinamide ribonucleotide. Simply one CHO group is attached. This is step 3. Next, what will happen? Who is the next? That is formation of uh, this. There is no keto group in purine, right? The basic nucleotide. So, there is an NH group. So, this glutamine actually comes in, right? And there is an whenever NH group is being transferred, NH group is also referred as amide group, right? So, the enzyme is amidotransferase, right? And formyl glycinamide ribonucleotide becomes formyl glycinamidine ribonucleotide, which is abbreviated as M, okay? So, this is the step where the OH group is converted to an NH group, okay. Basically, a keto acid is becoming an amine form, right. Next, what happens? There is a ring closer, right. So, all the five components of the pentagon are being attributed. So, what will happen? With the help of a cyclase enzyme, there is a ring closer and FGM is transformed into aminoimidazole ribonucleotide. So, now we have got a pentagon loaded on ribose 5-phosphate. So, we are halfway. So, we need another uh, few steps by which the entire 6 molecule ring can be formed, okay. So, let us see what happens. A carboxyl group is introduced, okay, by simple. We know carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide actually the bicarbonate actually dissociates to form carbon dioxide and water by combining with H plus ion. So, this donor can be found as bicarbonate in multiple textbooks. Basically, a COO is coming in and it is forming 5 amino 4 carboxy amino imidazole ribonucleotide which is uh, abbreviated as ACIR and amino imidazole ribonucleotide is abbreviated as AIR, okay, ACIR. This step 6. So, again we have started forming another ring over here, okay. So, next step what is happening? An aspartic acid is coming in, right. Again ATP is utilized, the enzyme is synthetized and the previous intermediate that is 5 amino 4 carboxy amino amidazole ribonucleotide is converted to n succinyl 5 amino amidazole carboxyamyl ribonucleotide which is abbreviated as SAI, CAR or SICAR, right. Now, do you remember in urea cycle where there was a synthetase enzyme where aspartate came in arginino succinate synthetase. If you have recalled it, very good because what happens in the next step is very similar to that of urea cycle. Whenever aspartic acid is coming in synthetase, the next enzyme is over there was lyase and fumarate was going out. Same thing is happening over here. So, aspartate has donated its nitrogen and now it has left uh, the remaining part has left via fumarate 
and it ultimately converts to 5 amine imidazole 4 carboxide ribonucleotide the succinyl group is gone and this is the final product which is abbreviated as AICAR this is step 9 we are left with what was the next donor again a formyl group so same formyl donor formyl transfer is a transformylase n10 formyl tetrahydrofolic acid it donates a CHO molecule right and it forms just formylated AICR or N formyl aminimidazole 4 carboxamide ribonucleotide all right again this is a one carbon exchange in which there is a distribution of I mean incorporation of one formyl group. Can you tell me what is the next step? If you have paid attention, the next step is basically the ring closer, right? So, all of these things have already been done. So, ultimately, finally, is the enzyme is known as IMP cyclohydrolase or IMP synthase, and we get the final product at the end of de novo purine synthesis, which is inosine monophosphate, all right? inosine monophosphate. Now, let me tell you in majority of cases, you may not choose to remember the various intermediates. You can conceptually remember if you are actually writing all the structures down, it is very easy for you to remember, but even then the name of the intermediates might be difficult for you to remember. These are the changes that are happening. The These are the donors in the fifth step and the tenth step, there are ring closure and in the 8th step there is no extra incorporation of any donor because fumarate is moved right these are the abbreviated names of the products that are written over here and if you are finding it difficult there is a mnemonic by which you can actually remember this penguins go fishing flipping and amazingly swim and float in water right so this is how I chose to remember, right? This is specifically how I created it. You will not find it in any textbook, trust me. And you may remember it in any way you like, but let me tell you the things that we will be discussing next, that is the later part of this video, that is purine salvage pathway, that is actually more important compared to the intermediate products of de novo synthesis pathway. But what you need to remember about de novo synthesis pathway is it how it is regulated. Anyway, we are not done with our purines of interest because we needed AMP, GMP because those are the adenine and guanine are the most important purines, right? But we see that they are not directly synthesized. So, the first intermediate is IMP, right? And AMP and GMP are actually formed from IMP, okay? Anyway, one thing that you need to know is the processes or the enzymes of purine synthesis, there are 10 steps, right? And in prokaryote, each reaction has been uh, seen to be catalyzed by a different polypeptide, all right? There is no problem in that. However, in eukaryotes, like many other such multi-enzyme polypeptide, for example, in fatty acid synthesis, we saw that a single polypeptide was coding for multiple enzymes. Similarly, over here, there are basically three polypeptides that are catalyzing multi channel reaction, multi catalyst reaction, Th steps 3, 4, 6, step 7 and 8 and step 9 and 10. That leads to a phenomenon that is known as substrate channeling. So, what is substrate channeling? It is actually the process of direct transfer of an intermediate between active site of one enzyme and another enzyme. So, that a sequential reaction can be done in a biosynthetic pathway that will minimize the time required for substrate to go from one enzyme to another basically, right? The active site can be located in either separate domain in a multifunctional complex or separate subunit, but what is important is these enzymes are a single polypeptide. So, again these numbers can be formulated as an MCQ question and you need to choose the ex right uh, combination that which enzymes are uh, actually acting together as a single polypeptide, right? So, uh, just as we discussed, after IMP is formed, it is converted to AMP and GMP. If we look at the conversion of IMP to AMP, this is often referred to as step 11, right? Because 
up uh, actually the first 10 steps which are actually controlled by multi subunit channeling reaction are catalyzed by only first 10 reaction so what happens adenylosuccinate synthetase active phosphate group is involved it is gtp it forms adenylosuccinate and ultimately adenylosuccinate lies again common theme just like uh, purine synthesis just like urea cycle whenever aspartate comes in under a succinate I, I in the synthetase enzyme a fumarate generally goes out if the motive is just to donate one amide moiety all right so aspartate comes in fumarate goes out the names are also same synthetase and lyase and ultimately we get adenosine monophosphate okay or amp Whenever we when we are converting IMP to GMP, first it is acted upon by a dehydrogenase enzyme which forms xanthosine monophosphate and ultimately by GMP synthase, okay, it is forming GMP, all right. Synthetase, all right, because there is an active uh, high energy phosphate group that is ATP is being donated. Now, the beauty of it is when we are synthesizing AMP, we are requiring man, synthesis of adenine, adenine, adenosine is requiring synthesis of guanine and here synthesis of guanosine is requiring synthesis of adenine. So, this will come in handy. So, ultimately AMP will be converted to GMP, uh, G, uh, G, ADP and ATP. So, basically AMP synthesis needs GTP or ATP synthesis needs GTP and GTP synthesis will need ATP because guanosine monophosphate will also be converted to GDP and GTP all right this goes to formation of ATP. So, ATP formation needs GTP and GTP formation needs ATP this thing you should keep in mind because where why because it is the regulation of purine synthesis which is very important and this is the committed step in de novo synthesis is actually the first step that is catalyzed by amido transfer is the first reaction where PAR was formed and it is being actually inhibited by both AMP and GMP. So, whenever it is a kind of feedback inhibition when there are excess AMP and GMP in circulation they will inhibit their own formation all right. Also there is formation of as I told you formation of AMP from IMP requires GTP and similarly formation of GMP requires ATP there is a reciprocal control of production. So, if one is low another will not be produced and if one is high then another will be produced right. So, thus AMP and GMP inhibit their own formation by feedback inhibition and they also inhibit formation of IMP from AGPRT right. AGPRT is an enzyme of purine salvage pathway right. So, this actually regulation will also be uh, applied when we are discussing the purine salvage pathway. Main thing is ATP and GTP are reciprocally controlling each other and also the first committed step as well as HGPRT enzyme. So, above the level of IMP production all right. So, above this level the generally it is independent and synergistic control and there is forward activation by PRPP. If there is excess PRPP, there will be excess formation. Once PRPP is formed, there will be excess formation of purine and pyrimidine. And however, below the level of IMP, we saw there is reciprocal control, ATP is controlling GTP and GTP is controlling ATP. So, overall the total amount of pure nucleoside nucleotide is controlled and relative amount of GTP and ATP are also controlled. Now, we move on to a uh, relatively more important but less complicated pathway that is purine salvage pathway. As I told you one that is nucleotides are actually available. We do not need to go through 10 steps to synthesize a ring, but ultimately the nucleo uh, I mean the bases are available and the nucleotides are actually getting attached I mean formed from the bases directly who is helping in again PRPP. So, this pathway ensures recycling of purines formed by degradation of nucleotides. So, when nucleotides are degraded actually the, the phosphates are gone the sugar is gone and nucleo bases are remaining. So, they can be actually reused here also PRPP is the starting material 
therefore the level of prpp uh, actually controls both the de novo and the purine salvage pathway and hence this pathway are closely related we should note that the de novo synthesis does not happen in all organs especially in brain de novo pathway is not operating over there since this purine salvage pathway is very important becomes very essential because still the demand for imp gmp and amp can be met because all of these reactions are reversible and ultimately amp gmp imp do not need to be synthesized and resynthesized de novo so very important once we are already having some nucleotides via de novo synthesis they can be easily interchanged among itself to form the corresponding nucleotides and what are the enzymes hypoxanthine is converted to imp by hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase hgprt this is the enzyme which both imp and gmp were inhibiting right next guanine is converted to gmp by again same enzyme hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase and adenine can be converted to amp via the enzyme adenine phosphoribosyl transferase or aprt so basically knowing three reaction we know about purine salvage pathway we do you know the regulation yes we also know the regulation that both amp and gmp will inhibit the enzyme hgprt right so if there is excess amp and gmp we do not need purine salvage pathway as well but if there is a dearth of these compounds the nucleotides purine salvage pathway will be in motion now the last part of this discussion are purine analogs right how this purine analogs are actually behaving as anti cancer drugs basically we saw how the purines look like minor or simple modification of these purines will lead to a very structurally similar nucleotide that will be initially falsely recognized by the system or the nucleotide synthesizing system and then these purine this altered purine nucleotides are actually purine bases are incorporated in the dna and rna and once they are incorporated the further dna and rna propagation cell division cannot occur and thus the cell division is arrested and thus these purine analogs act as anti cancer drug so specifically we can see six mercaptopurine whenever we are hearing the word mercapto it means replaced uh, sulfur replacement right so six mercaptopurine inhibits formation of imp conversion of imp to gmp and amp so it is devoiding the cell of all these intermediates similarly cytarabine or cytosine arabinoside where the ribose is replaced by arabinose it kills the cells by getting arrested by arresting the cell dividing cells in the s phase folate antagonist for example methotrexate is an altered nucleotide inhibitor of dihydrofolate reductase hampers with one carbon metabolism so that this one carbon groups are not available and we have seen in many synthetic reaction one carbon uh, reaction are as almost essential therefore all these drugs as a said in again glutamine antagonist inhibit steps 1 and 4 so all of them by inhibiting nucleotide synthesis ultimately inhibits synthesis of dna and rna and thus cancer cells who have got an increased turnover cannot be produced and thus they act as anti cancer drug there are many other examples but i have quoted a few so to conclude we have discussed the nucleotide chemistry we have discussed the overview of nucleotide chemistry we have discussed what are the 10 rather 11 steps of de novo synthesis of purine we have discussed what are the components from which a purine ring is synthesized we have discussed the purine salvage pathway we have discussed the regulation of both of them and we have also discussed the application of purine analogs in medicine these are my references and i thank you for your kind attention